I love sending Kim news because she gets irritated. Whatever irritates Kim, I like Too to funny, do. mama. <laughs> so, <laughs> that happens in the room. I like I had to do like a song. Too funny, mama. What's with the what up what up i'm a little crooked what up what's happening y'all welcome to Chim funny mamas this is chim whitley and, and, and hey, I'm tell sherry them shepherd i'm sherry, I'm sherry shepherd. shepherd they caught me with my I glasses i didn't get on. much sleep huh i said they caught me with my glasses on okay why didn't you get much sleep i woke up a little anxiety but i went to bed about midnight then i woke up at four Oh, I woke up at four too. We both woke up at four. That's interesting. That's wow, really interesting. Yeah, and I never wake up like that time, even though I mean it's a different time difference, but the same thing. Yeah, Why normally so I get up at four forty-five. Huh? I think mine is four forty-five. Okay, are you taking I do. my Ooh, story? I like your nails. Okay, Thank sorry. You. Oh, these are my Beyonce Why nails. Oh, those are cute. Why are you so anxiety filled and why are your nails still with the Beyonce color on them? Because first of all, to do this freaking took a whole hour and a half. I, they can stay on for three weeks until they grow out. What's wrong with your middle <laughs> finger? Oh no. You putting up your middle finger, half your nail is missing. What is going on? I have to go get my nails done. Look at my dry, yeah, I got mine skin. Done. I did Beyonce and I'm keeping it on for the next three weeks. Oh, oh, I could tell that, took... that they were ash. Did well, you get no, your miracle just... buttercream? Oh, where is that? I did get it. Thank I you. I got it. It's on the it's on it's on the table. I do need that. I gotta put I it in here. It. I was in the middle of texting Ada Rodriguez. Ada Rodriguez, all the books you sent. Ada needs to come and sign the books so we can give them away to our two funny mama fans. I ordered um I ordered a bunch of books, Ada Rodriguez's book, uh, Legitimate Kid. And um, I ordered about 20 or 30 books out of our Two Funny Mamas account because we wanted to support our comedy sister. And it's about <laughs> Ada Rodriguez. Her mom is uh, Puerto Rican and her dad is like Dominican. And apparently there's a whole, <laughs> there's a whole racial, <laughs> a component within the Puerto Rican and Dominican uh, uh, ethnicities. And so her Puerto Rican didn't like her Dominican side. And wow. so she writes about like how literally her mom kidnapped her from her dad, took her and her sibling to like America. Then her dad was trying to kidnap her and how she got back and found her dad and then found out she had like 20 siblings. It's a very funny book. It's called Legitimate wow. Kid. Once we get Ida to sign all of the books, then we're going to be giving books away just to support yes. our friend. We actually have Mr. proof. Huh? I believe we have proof, uh, Logan, of a delivery to uh, to the Whitley estate. <laughs> oh, no. Mm. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. I just got... Woo, you almost took off the top. Uh, what? This is what Two Funny Mamas has bought for our fans. Y'all see this? Ada Rodriguez's new book, okay? Legitimate Kid. I love her cover. So, Two Funny Mamas fans, these are coming to you live. I think I should sign Ada's oh. book for her and send her to <laughs> this is for You're you. You're not supposed to show that part, Chris. God, oh, How are you? <laughs> what is, did, I, did yeah, she piss yeah. you off? What did you say? Ada loves me. It's, she's, no. her Hey, hey, Ada knows I got arthritis. Okay. But why did, why did, <laughs> Why did the books have to break the tiles of your kitchen? That's what I'm saying. Why would you throw? I'm I'm a little scared to send this video to Ada right now. I'm just like, she gonna understand. What, what's going on? She gonna love it. We bought all those books. She know I can't pick up all them books and they slipped out my hand. What am I gonna do? 
That didn't hardly okay. look like nothing slipped out your hand. It did. And I was just showing the people. I didn't know it was going to be so many. I wasn't ready for all the books. I wasn't ready for that big old box of books. But that is for our fans. Apologize for throwing them, Ada. Over I to really Kim Whitley's did. house to sign the books that we got. I just tossed them. We would like to gift them to our fans. Right. How are we going to gift them? Are we having a giveaway, a gifting? How many contest? books? Did, did we, is it like 20 or 30 books? That sounds about right. Because I show ain't going back to count them. I can, you you just re, if you just play the audio, I'll it's just listen to hear how many hit the ground. Books. Ooh, Chris. And then could okay. you be a guest on our podcast? Yes. Period. Our fans would love to hear from you. All right, we got a quick podcast today. We can't tarry long. We cannot tarry long. Let's get it. What's that? What's that word mean? Huh? That's that's that uh, Siobhan Terry's turn from. She from something, Port Smith, Virginia. She from one of them, Terry Long. She always said, like, come on, Kim Whitley, you can't Terry Long. That means you can't take too long. You can't, I don't know, fool around. It's one of them Southern, it cracks me up. You can't Terry Long. I guess uh, that's what it means. Yes, we can't Terry Long. Uh, I, I'm going out of town. I'm going to be in, uh, in uh, yeah. Dallas this weekend, Dallas, Texas this weekend. You're going out of town. You're going to be in um, nope. where you going Cleveland. Be? Not this you're weekend. You're going to be in Cleveland at the, no, gonna this be at the weekend, Cleveland Improv. I'm going to be I will be in Cleveland. That's my whole schedule right there. Um, but this weekend, uh, I'm going to be here. You know, Devin, our friend Devin, it's her birthday. But then next weekend, uh, I'm going to be at the Cleveland Improv, November 17th and 18th. Uh, that's four shows, two on Friday, two on Saturday. You can go to the Improv, Cleveland Improv, and get your tickets. I'm very excited. That's my hometown. I'm going to take, uh, I got Kevin Tate with me and Andre Lavelle. Uh, we're going to have some good shows. And then I'm going to stay until Thanksgiving. I'm going to take Joshua and I'm going to take the dog. So that's what oh, I'm that's doing. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So you're going with, a, with the whole tribe. A whole tribe. We'll we just did close up your house for the winter. There, there it is. They're taking the whole tribe. I, I got my leave the big dog here. I can't. He don't act right. He might. I don't know what he might do on that plane. So he got to stay. Oh, that's here the one be trying get... to kill you by drowning you, huh? Yes, that is the one who tries to kill by drowning. Um, but we, I went to the Atlanta Comedy Theater this weekend. Uh, it was really a lot of fun. Um, oh wow, uh, Henry Coleman uh, got very, very funny. And Andre went and uh, we tore the place down. Except it was a bad show on Saturday. Weirdest, well, you know, I called you. It was the worst show ever. So what's wrong with your face right now? What did you do? Just snot? Huh? Something's wrong. Your breath stink? No, Something's I'm wrong. Saying... No, I'm You're just, sitting there I'm like snot. this. What, what's wrong with you? So you no, can only you see my snot? eye. No, I want you to just what? see my eyes. So oh, you let's see your eyes. Oh, are you laughing behind your hand? Are you? Are I'm you... intrigued. You can't see intrigued. I'm intrigued. That's how my eyes are looking well, I, at you. I'm intrigued. Well, I could, I could see strangeness. It looks like you're sniffing in the middle of your hand. Like you put something there and you sniffing it. That's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so the Atlanta Comedy Club, except for one particular show, which was uh, we talked about Horrible. this. Uh, and you put up too many comics. It was late, but all of Bounce TV, my people from Bounce was there, presidents and, and executives. Yeah, what did you, you learn and, from doing this show? Oh, I learned. First of all, it was freezing in the club. It was late. Mm -hmm. I'm not going up last ever again. I don't care if I am the headliner. If it's that late, y'all start the show hour and a half late. I'm going up as soon as, as the people come in. I'm getting that over. As soon as it be, you coming. either going up first or second. Right. That, that, I can't do it. All the comics I let be, be a nice comic. Y'all can go up. When I tell you these people were sleeping and looking at me, my jokes was not hitting. When I tell you, and then oh, it was a lot. A lot going on. Uh uh, my family was there, Dreeny and Tyler and all of them. Then my ex came up in there and he brought his new woman. Oh, of all shows. <laughs> 
And how did you do in front of his new woman? Did you kill him, Kim? Horrible. Horrible. No, all you the shows are like a celebration. I bomb. In front of the I new girl? In front of the new girl, I took it in the booty or took it in the face, whichever one is. <gasps> so <laughs> you took it in the booty. Did you did she whisper to your ex and go, I see why you broke up with her? Oh, that's horrible. She said she something. Did. She know she did, because I would have said like, something. You cannot I bomb in one. front of the new girlfriend. Wait, first of all, wait a minute. I didn't know the new girlfriend was there. They snuck in there and watched it. And on the end, he comes out. I was like, oh, Lord, it introduces me to her. It was a horrible, horrible night. Because she looked at you like this. <laughs> you guys want to see a cheery version? You want to see a cheery version of the weekend? Huh. Yes. Okay. Sherry, you can watch it with... Uh, that mysterious audio audio oh yeah oh that's andre yeah andre, andre pieced this together shout out that's to the uh, comic in this moment. peace shoes yep. by real vibe good. underscore s on oh look at that are you praying oh it's oh look at that booty oh, look at those. about to go out oh, you had a nice that's you had a nice crowd yeah, nice. It was nice. That's Andre's Andre cousin. Andre having the women again. Oh, these two people went to high school with me. All right. Look at Andre was up there killing it, having a good time. Is that? Oh, that's oh, Henry. Oh, that's the. Oh, they announcing me to come out. That's one night. Oh, yeah, the shoes. Are, oh. How did you do that? Yeah, I got my little boot shoes on that Yolanda did, Flutter Designs, and this is us all the. That was a good little clip. Thank Shout you, out to Andre. Andre. Shout out to Andre because he should have showed the picture of me calling Sherry, talking about, I took it in the face. Mm. And Sherry said, what time did you go up? How many comics did you have ahead of you? She knew, she knew, not again. Because, I, and I told you that old trope of opener, middler, headliner has changed. If you're going and it's late and the crowd is paid to see you, and why are you waiting until the end of the night for them to see you? You let another comics go in your sweet spot when they're alert. They, they haven't gotten tired yet. They're ready to laugh. That's where you should be. Yeah. Well, I learned a bad so lesson. I think, from I the think headliner is like in the middle. But yeah, you I learn. Them so I, will not go I did. How do I, how do I redeem myself with those people? I write them letters. Oh, with the girlfriend. That's what you're talking about. With your girlfriend. No, I'm not talking about the girlfriend. I'm talking about David Hudson from Bounce. My girl Cheryl from Bounce. I, it was bad. It was bad. Well, when you go back, you invite them to a show. Um, They're never going to come again. If you would like, you know, I'm going to be at the City Winery in Atlanta. Lamont Farrell is doing a show. Uh, he's doing a show New Year's Night in Atlanta. You should do that show. But no, I'm going I'm to the Atlanta. The, I'm going to city the city winery. winery in Atlanta in March. You're very welcome to come, but that's far away. Um, I think that but you no, should brush it off and let it go, Kim. I really do. Okay. Okay. All right. I will. I think we okay. we tend to hold on to things, and probably most likely all the people that you had come, they've moved on, and other things are taking precedent in their life. And sometimes we get stuck. We so beat ourselves up that we think that we're on their thoughts and their mind and they going to say this and they're not even thinking twice about us because life has happened in front of them that they have to take True. care of. And you will go to them next week and go, you know what? It was not ideal. And I know I didn't do well. And they're going to be like, Kim, you was funny. We just didn't like waiting all night, but you was funny because your air, oh. your aura is funny. Yeah. I will take that. Oh, you know what was real crazy? What was real crazy um, is that I ran into a um, a cousin came up to me. Chris, you got those pictures ready? Yeah. Uh, and it was a lady, a girl. Came, her name is Nicole Smith, uh, but Nicole Baldwin. She walked up to me and she looked like my family and she said, I'm your cousin. I just found out. I said, what? She said, my great grandmother and your grandmother our sisters. I was like, no way. Wow. I looked at her. She looked, she looked just like my cousin Dee. There she go right there. 
And that's her wow. husband. Wow. Now that's what's so crazy. She gave it to me, she introduced herself and I was like, no way. And then she sent me this information today and she sent the picture, the same picture I have in my house. And she sent this picture and she marked where my grandmother was. And then her, I think it was her great grandmother is in the, um, cause it's a picture of Bessie and Theopolis. They are my great grandparents. Uh, and behind her in the back, Chris, you had a picture. Yeah, working on it. Sorry, he should. Uh, you can. Oh, okay. Not sure. Well, we, we've got it. Yeah, it should be there. S- image okay, sixty one hundred. There you go. Here you go, Keith. There we go. That's Theopolis and Bessie. Now, see with the K on it, she marked it. The K, that's my grandmother. Now, the girl oh, in wow. the middle, the tall girl, is her great grandmother. So wow. their sister. Ain't that crazy? She sent that proof today. She says that, that one with the K sure. on it. That looked like you. Look like you bored. That's, that's my mama's mama right there. Yep. Right there. Oh my God. Ain't that crazy? Do you have this picture? You need to like have frame it. it. I do have it in a frame in my house. My daddy had a picture because my daddy was like, oh, I got to put the, because my father had it up. He said, I got the white man up in my house. I was like, daddy, well, mommy's granddad. You can. <laughs> I said, well, daddy, she had to get it from somewhere. So, yeah, <laughs> that side of the family right there. But it was very interesting that she came up and I sent it to all my cousins. I said, we got, we found a new cousin, you know, and she's had that picture up in her house and didn't realize wow. that that was my picture. Yep. Small world. So it was very interesting. But nothing does. I did another thing in Atlanta. We can get right to it. I did a book signing with a dear friend of mine named, uh, his name is Robert Jackson. He's just released his new book um, and it's called uh, Four Mothers Raising Sons. You see, I wrote on it, it's Kim's book because we was doing a, a book signing. And uh, okay. I did the forward to the book. I wrote the forward. Oh, nice. But this, this is a great book. I've already used it, opened up, uh, followed stuff on it. And uh, he speaks all across the country, but this is his new book. He has written about nine books, but well, we can talk to him. Uh, uh, Chris, anything else you want to say about Robert Jackson? He's an ex-football player. He yeah, is, got, uh, got cut by the Vikings in the yeah. 90s. He's he's turned it into motivational speaking. I believe he just spoke to 500 parents this morning. He's got, uh, what do we say, seven books out that you said. You spoke with him Saturday. I'd love to hear how that went. But uh, Robert Jackson, you can go to his website, robertjacksonmotivates.com. And you know what? This is a black business, so support it. And thanks to Miracle Buttercream for uh, for making this possible each and every week. Robert Jackson, everybody, joining Two Funny Mamas. Hi, hey, Robert. Hi, Robert. Hi, how are you today? Good, good. So tell us about your book. Tell us. Well, um, this is book number seven. This is uh, this book took me a little bit to get done. You know, I wrote uh, six books prior to that. I speak to educators, parents, students around the country and around the world. Uh, this book is near and dear to me. Old picture from college, got moms on the front because I was raised by all women. And I hear these myths about men, that men can't be raised by women. So um, I decided to write a book to give women strategies. Any woman who's raising a young man or you got a grown son, you know, so whether he's young, a baby, whether he's a teenager, whether he's grown, you know, I'll give you strategies throughout the book, on different phases, trying to help women understand men more, especially our young, your young sons, your brothers, fathers, uncles, so on and so forth. Okay. Give us some, give us some pick a age group. Give us some strategies. Well, it just, um, if I had to pick an age group, I have to, it depends on the chapter. Some of the chapters are treating young sons like grown men, a uh, mama's Ooh. boy. Uh, a mama's boy can be <laughs> a five-year-old mama's boy, or he can be a 30-year-old mama's boy. So, you know, it just depends. Um, you were his mother, not his father. Um, I never met Ooh. my biological father growing up, but my mom used to always say, I'm your mother and your father. Respectfully, mom, you're not. You're my mom. <laughs> Respectfully. Yeah. Right. And I understand why she said that, because he was absent. But you're not both parents. And, um, um, you know, effective can I ask you a question? Sure. It, it, it's so funny because I, I, that's what I say all the time. I can teach my son, Jeffrey, who's 18, to be a kind person. 
person to be a good human being. I can teach him how to treat women, but I cannot teach him how to be a man because there's aspects of being a man that I have no clue. I can teach him what I think a man is like, and it probably would be very, very off. Um, as Andre Lavelle, our friend, tells us all the time when we think we know what men want. But there was an uh, instance in over in London where there were two grown men, 38 and 40, and the mother took them to court to ask the court to get them out of her house because they were eating her wow. out of house and home and they wouldn't leave. A situation like this. I think a lot of times we want we don't want our boys to leave. We want to baby them. Now, when it comes to the, uh -huh. where along the line you think she made a mistake? <laughs> <laughs> well, Sherry, it was it was it was long before they turned thirty eight and forty. Um, I think some mistakes was made um, when they were younger, maybe four or five years old. Uh, Kim and I was talking about this on Saturday when we kept going back and forth with the um, commentary regarding the book. Uh, we was talking about her son, and and I was saying these are things that he should be doing. Joshua should be doing this before he turns. By the time he turns twelve, he should be doing this. And Kim said that was her favorite chapter. But uh, Sherry, I think there were some mistakes made all along the way, and she set herself up to fail. Why do you have a grown thirty-eight and forty-year-old man living in your house? What's going? I don't understand that. I mean, unless one of them sick. If they have some kind of uh, mental illness or physical ailment, I can understand that. But if they grown, able-bodied men that can go to work and can take care of themselves, they should not be living with their mama at 38 and 40. That's mama's boy. And she then she got tired one day and got mad. Now she wants them to leave. And she probably coddled mm -hmm. them a little bit too much. And that's why they didn't want to leave, because they felt comfortable with mama. How do they date? I don't understand now, that. And what kind of woman would date a man at 40 years old living with his mom? There's a documentary about <laughs> yeah. this. Step brother. Step brothers. <laughs> oh, step brother. Okay. Chris, if there's any questions, bring them in. But, like, Robert, it's so funny when you say coddling too much. What do you call coddling versus really getting behind your son and supporting him and his dreams? What's coddling too much? Well, you know, I believe that every young man is going to make some bad decisions, going to make some mistakes, and there should be consequences for those actions. Um, many times, I think a lot of young men are able to master talking themselves out of getting in trouble. I think there should be consequences for things. And mothers, when mothers say, if you, if you do this, I'm going to do this, you need to stick to the script. That's what I mean by coddling. Well, mom, you know, I, I, you know, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. And oh, okay, I'll give you another chance. No, no, don't give him another chance when he, that's when me. he gets those consequences yeah, that's and holds yeah. him accountable. That's what I mean by coddling. Or you tell him to be home by five o'clock. He shows up at seven thirty with excuses, and you said, okay, oh, I'm yeah. gonna give you a chance to be right next time. I said sometimes there need to be some consequences. I ain't say you gotta go crazy. I'm just saying take his car away. You can't drive your car for a week or whatever he likes, his video games or whatever. It should be some consequences because too many young men are out here doing crazy stuff because there's no consequences for their actions. If that makes sense. And then they, they learn, hold up, that's my son. Y'all keep talking. All right, I got some comments. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll fill okay, that yeah, in. Okay, yeah, I would love to hear the comments or questions. Yeah, absolutely. So earlier, I believe it was PR Jade brought up that uh, – she thought seven was a good uh, age to explore. So say a listener has a seven-year-old, how about some quick advice for, uh, you know, getting things kicked off the right way, Robert? Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Seven, at seven years old, he should be fixing his bed. He should be able to keep his room clean. Um, if he wants to, you know, uh, use technology, and when you go in his room, his bed is not fixed, you give him a chance to get it right. You know, or at seven years old, when I was seven, I took out the trash. You know, I would take the dumpsters out to the uh, out to the uh, street, you know, for the trash. There's certain things he can do. Now, he should not be on the stove yet. He should not be, uh, he may not be sewing his clothes, but he can separate his clothes. He can put the darks with the darks. He can put the whites with the whites. Those, when you start working on those skills at a young age and start grooming him, for what he needs to be because men need to learn to be domestic 
and they need to learn to be self-sufficient. Now I'm married, I got kids, but I had a house. <laughs> I can cook, I can clean, I can sew. I, I did all this stuff before I got married. And, and we got to teach our young men how to live on their own before they go live with somebody else. So at seven, mm. those are some of the things that you're doing, washing dishes, <laughs> drying dishes, putting up stuff, getting on the chair, help putting up glasses or putting up or sweeping the floor. There's a lot of things that he can do to learn. But when mommy is always cleaning and say, oh, you go ahead and play with your friends or you go ahead and do this, you know, you, you're setting him up for failure. He needs to learn at a young age that he needs to have responsibilities and he need to be held accountable at a young age. That's why so many women complain to me, they dating grown boys and they dating grown boys mm -hmm. because these mamas are not holding these young men accountable. Fathers too, but we're talking about mothers today. I, and I and I apologize. I hit I hit the hang up button instead of the mute button. <laughs> yeah, Robert, gone. what did you do to her this weekend that she was so she had to get off here right away? Hey, show Kim. Ah! We had a good, I heard I heard Sherry talk. Sherry made a good point earlier. Um, sometimes people do get tired, but that don't mean you didn't have a good show. We were there. We were there deep. The show was great. You know, it was getting late. I thought the show was good. And I told Kim that. Kim, stop that mess. I told you it was a good Kim show. Likes oh, to, you first of all, <laughs> Robert wasn't at the horrible show. Robert was at a good show. The horrible <laughs> show came after Robert. I was like, yeah, okay. my people. You Robert said Saturday. I was there was Saturday. A, right. So think about it. It was the 10 o'clock show. So okay. think all right. about this. It didn't start. It didn't start till 1130. How do you explain? I didn't get okay. it. One o'clock. I didn't even get on. Stage but you so are much. right, Robert. In the you are right in the fact that what Kim does that's a big deal. Uh, because I I'm trying to teach Jeffrey that. Uh, you know, yeah. Don't beat yourself up. But there are consequences. But I think with Kim, it's like you know not holding on to things because it it takes up it sucks up so much of your yeah. energy and you can't fix it. It's done. Right. But when you, when you continuously beat yourself up. And go, I should have. What if I, oh, what are they going to think of me? Oh, my gosh. And like I had to tell Kim, yes, your Bounce TV executives who, who have our show, Act Your Age, were there. But your career is not built on one set that didn't go well on, at the Atlanta Go Comedy it. Theater. Your exactly. reputation is built on a series of successes that you have had. You think one stand-up? Thing that didn't go well beats out you playing sugar on friday one bad right. stand-up beats out you playing a character on young and hungry that everybody loves right. one one bad thing beats out on all of the things the jingles and the commercials that you've done so it's like i think that she takes on too much and it sucks right. it out and, I and that's what i said and now the people they they're over there they live in life they're not thinking about that show no more they still going what can we put Kim in because she was so funny in this right. sitcom that's why she was the star right. okay and Sherry I think a lot of mothers do that too many mothers are beating mm. up themselves because of the mistake they made or made a bad decision listen you can't do anything about what's already done you can't do nothing about it rehearsing it stop rehearsing past pain and that's one of the things I talked mm. about in the book. Not rehearsing past pain because that pain is behind you. If you keep on going in the past, you're going to get paralyzed in the past. Man, we got to be able to move forward. We cannot continue to paralyze ourselves in the past. There is nothing you can do about what you've already done. And guess what? If it keeps happening to you, then you haven't learned the lesson yet. If it keeps happening, you know, you keep getting bit by the same dog. When are you going to change your route? You keep getting bit oh, by the same oh, dog. Know. Shoot the dog. <laughs> The and, and I want mothers if to stop you, doing I that. I spoke to, <laughs> when I spoke to those parents. Uh -huh. I spoke this is a this is really morning. good stuff. I want people, our fans, and I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I didn't mean to do that. No, it's um, okay. Chris, what comments or questions? Because we did have one. Thank you. Oh, where so can many. People, where can people get your book? That's the first thing I want to put out for our listeners in case they're not watching. Where can fans they can get, get the book, book on the website, Robert Jackson Motivates with the S.com, Robert Jackson Motivates.com. Um, I, I had a parent today was crying after I got done speaking. She was crying on my shoulder, talking about something she did two years ago. I said, Stop. 
I said, you can't do nothing about what you've already done. You got to move forward. RobertJacksonMotivation.com. Your copy. We got everything. We got it's a one stop shop. We got what you need in there. I broke it down for you. <laughs> Robert you actually. Break it down. Robert practices what he preaches too. You see it in all of his bios and everything. He mentions it. Obviously, if you play college football, you're a pretty high level athlete. You you mentioned that you got cut by the Vikings. I think that's important to mention because that was probably the most devastating thing that you felt happened to you in your life at that time. Absolutely. I was suicidal, um, depression. Um, you know, Kim, no, you know Blaylock. Me and Blaylock used to, you know, we was playing around the same time. We had the same agent and um that's why Blake lost a good friend because he helped me through that tough time. And when I started teaching and I started working with those kids, it was healing for me. Um, because that is tough when you get cut, you've been playing your whole life and I had a good college career, but you know, you fracture your kneecap, you get cut. And then it, it, it you know, it's, it's rough. I wasn't prepared for, um, what I was walking into, but if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans, you know, Come on. I decided to take the route. So I took this route. And, um, you know, going around the world, trying to save lives, save souls. And um, it's, it's very rewarding. And it, and I approach it just like I did when I played football. You know, proper preparation prevents poor performance. You know, you got to wow. approach it the think, same way. What do you think now about they have this term gentle parenting, uh, you know, where people explain things to their children? It's not just do it because I said do it. Let me explain to you why I'm doing it. Let me talk to you. You are a little person with feelings. Let me respect mm -hmm. that. Sometimes I think uh, I've talked to Jeffrey too much because all I got mm -hmm. was whoopings. I can't remember no none of my childhood <laughs> without a whooping me attached too. to it or getting popped in the mouth, popped in the back of the head. And, I, and there was something, I swore I would never do that to my son. I can count on my yes. fingers the number of times I've given my son a whooping and I talk to him. Now I still, he respects me. If I look at him too long, he'll start crying. Now Kim on the other oh, hand, she got a lot of patience until you make her make, you, you got to be your five ties. Cause another five plus five markers. Now Kim on the other hand, my friend, I love Kim. And, but Joshua know where to take Kim and beyond. And Kim will pick up anything in her path, a chair, a rack of clothes mm. and that's a will fly. <laughs> a rack of clothes is hilarious. And Kim. curse words that I've never heard come out of Kim's mouth. PlayStation 5, PlayStation 3, <laughs> Nintendo original Nintendo. And I'll be like, Robert, I'll be like, Kim, I don't think the punishment, I don't think all that fit what Joshua did. Right. But so it's two styles. The gentle parenting, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm layering it too much on you. And what we were so frustrated with. There it oh. is. What do you say? Well, Sherry, say you. Well, Sherry, I think the, the biggest thing, first of all, I had my mom went zero to 100 real quick, too, and my grandmother. So that's how I was raised. I the only thing I remember is getting up off the floor. You know, I didn't know what I did. So I think that's extreme. Now, I think what, uh, to answer your question, Sherry, I think there needs to be a balance. And I think you need to not go extreme like our parents did and not go too yeah. soft. Just find a spot in the middle. And that's what you have to do. You have to find a, a center ground because all children are different. I will say this. We cannot manage all of our children the same way. I have three children and I have to manage them differently. Now, in the case with your son, you said there was, he's 18. You say you went soft on him a little bit sometimes and you know that's that's okay but it's still not too late to recover now he wants to know eight. why yeah why but why well, mom but why it, it, well you know it's, it's okay to explain because we're in a different generation of kids because remember sherry and kim our parents didn't explain a lot they said shut up and that was the end of it right or when grown folks come in the room don't talk I'm like, how am I going to express myself? I can't talk, you know? So I think there should be a, um, a some kind of line there where you can't explain to him. But once you explain it, and he continues to say it, and I say, hey, I've already explained it. I'm done talking about it. I think there needs to be a cutoff point because kids will drag it into the ground, and you have to have a cutoff point at some point. Right, and, I, and, and it's, I've actually learned that because I heard Joshua talking to the dogs sound just like me. I was like, oh my mm -hmm. God, mm. what 
are you doing? Sit down. Yeah. Well, I was like, where's he getting that from? I was like, oh my. So I, right. So I was like, it's not too late. It's not too late. I changed the way I talked to him. Plus it's not healthy for me. I was like, why am I yelling? Yeah, so I got to work with you. <laughs> we got a, a question from the audience. I need blood pressure up for no reason. JB wants to know how how should uh, how should they handle if the son hasn't completed chores or activities they were supposed to, and there's a boyfriend or husband present. How would you approach that? Oh. Wait, whose boyfriend? The mother's boyfriend? Sounds like it. Yes. Okay. Well, that's, I'm glad you brought that up because if the if the boyfriend or is present, if the mother's handling it, he she needs to handle it. He needs to stay out of it, especially if he doesn't have a good relationship or any kind of relationship with your son. I'm tired of seeing these mamas dating somebody. The son, first time seeing them, now you want to try to be daddy on day one. You can't do that. Good luck. Now, if he's not if he's not handling the consequ- if he's not handling his business, he's not handling his chores. There's got to be some consequences. You know, you got to start pulling some stuff away from them. And I agree with Sherry, all that beating on kids and stuff, we got to cut that out. You know, that was some of that stuff. I didn't learn a whole lot from that, you know, but there needs to be consequences for their actions. And kids have got to learn when I don't follow the rules, there's consequences. If you don't pay your mortgage uh, for a month or two, won't they put you out? Or if <laughs> yes. you don't go to work, you won't be able to pay your bills. So it's, it's consequences for everything that we do. And our kids need to learn that there's consequences for their actions. They need to learn that at a young age. So I would definitely pull some things because all of our kids love something different. I mean, with, with my daughter's at home, my son is grown now, but you know, still he called me one time and told me that uh, uh, his car got repoed. Mm. You know, I, was at, I, was, I was at the airport. He said, uh, hey dad, my car got repoed. And it was an awkward silence on the phone. I, I kept eating. He said, you there? I said, I'm here. I said, I'm here. I said, uh, he's like, you ain't going to say nothing? I said, what do you want me to say? Oh, yeah, I'm going to say something. Um, why'd you miss the payments? They ain't just take your car, boy. You missed the payments. <laughs> Did you make yeah. the payments? Uh, well, you know, I was going to pay him. I said, it don't work like that. It don't work and he like said, that. well, they, they want $29,000 or they said my car is gone. I said, I'm ready to catch my flight. Good luck. Figure it out. And I told him that. That's straight up. And I told yep. him to figure it out. Steve, and guess what? A mother that's what Sherry would have done. Figured it out. See, a mother, mother would have, I think a mother would have been like, boy, I, I'm going to send you this money. And you better not ever let that happen again. Don't do it. Yeah. Because do he it. needs to learn. We never lose. Like Nelson Mandela said, we never lose. We win or we learn. How are they going to learn if we keep bailing them out? You got to stop doing it, moms. Because he's going to keep on using that as a crutch. If we keep on bailing him out, how is he going to learn the lesson? He's not. Mm-hmm. You got to let him. You got to let him feel that. Feel burn that finger on that fire. You got to let him feel it. Because when when he got his car repo, guess what? Two days later, he drove up to my house in another car. He figured it out. But I didn't do anything to help him. And we got to allow Robert, them to figure it out. Can I tell you one quick? My nephew, DeAndre, remember my nephew that lived with me, Kim? Uh-huh. I bought, because he didn't have a car, and, and I my friend got him a job at, like, Federal Express, but it was so far away. So I oh, bought. I remember that. I did, did, yeah. Remember, I did the research. This is where I went wrong. And I, I did all the research. I bought him a Nissan Sentra so he could, this is before he even got the job, so he could Uber with the with the car, fix the air conditioner, had the pink slip, second, gave him the pink slip. He comes back to me, then he got a job at Federal Express. He come back maybe six weeks later, auntie, uh, I, I, I really wanted a BMW. So I, mm. I, I went and I gave them, I turned in the, the Sentra for BMW. Mm. When I was Ubering, the, the DoorDash, they, took the BMW because it was in the dump and it's going to cost $5,000 to get the BMW out. And I said, you now you got a car payment on a BMW when I bought you a Nissan Sentra. And he looked, when I tell you this boy, he looked at me like, uh, uh, uh. But Sherry, you know why he did that? You didn't, you didn't make him pay, make payments on that Nissan Sentra. He should have been making payments to you. 
Tell her. Tell her. Tell her. Sherry, sure. why are you Gave giving this boy? Why, why, why does he get a free car? What did he do to My earn? Heart. Did he make? Did no. he make good grades? <laughs> did he? Did he accomplish something? See, stop that mess. If he's going to, if we're going to give our kids something, especially our sons, they got to earn it. Stop. I get tired of these more. When I was teaching high school and, and I knew when the new Jordans came out and because half the school was empty and I'm like, yeah, you're guilty. I see your faces. So I said, why are you buying him new Jordans? And he making straight Fs. It makes educators jobs hard. Sherry, oh, yeah. he should have been making payments to you. You know why? When he makes payments to you, he appreciates what you did for him. He appreciates that car. You know why he sold that car? He didn't appreciate it. He didn't pay nothing for it. He didn't sweat. He didn't do nothing. So he's going to disrespect you by taking the car and trading it in. Uh, when he didn't have one no car payment. He want to floss. He want to be, he want to, he want to floss like Michael Irvin's son, you know, got all this hard rapping. Boy, you grew up in the gated community. Stop. You know, these, <laughs> that's what these kids do. <laughs> well, he was on a bike. He rode his bike for a year. Mm. Good. Good. And you it's okay, to. Sherry. You were trying to be nice. You were trying to do something nice for your nephew, and that's that's noble. But when you do something for anybody, I feel like they should earn it. Why are you buying him a new car? It, it's cool to get him something, but make him pay you $100 every time he get paid. And you can put it in an account somewhere and save it. You can give it to him five years later. Say, I put this $100 up for the last five years, and here it is. I want to give you something to start off and put a down payment on your house. I mean, just they got to earn it. So, and if they don't earn it, they want to. We want to help, but in order to help them, we need to make them earn it. Are there any qu uh, qu more questions, Chris? I'm loving this. So, so many comments and questions. Uh, my brothers learned that, this is from Soulfully Wise. My brothers learned the above growing up as we grew. Grade school to the grave. Everything begins in the home. Wise words. Uh, Alicia can't stand ungrateful people. Everybody's really enjoying you, Robert. There's a lot of people uh, jumping in saying how much they appreciate what you're saying. Marsha T is saying Auntie Sherry was the ATM. Her nephew won up on her, spoiling him, and he <laughs> wanted that BMW. Yep. Uh, and also, who, uh, who has the collection plate? That's from NYC. Everybody's loving the preaching you're doing. I have something for you. No real questions popping up. Everybody's just entertained. Uh, Robert's motto is for every problem, there's a solution. I think Sherry and Kim, you should just rapid fire, throw out a problem and see if Robert's got a solution. I bet he does. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, Kim. What do you say, Kim? Um, uh, okay. What, what if he is in school and, uh, uh getting bullied? What about that? What about getting bullied in mm -hmm. school? Uh, Jiu -jitsu, Jiu -jitsu should the classes. mother come and intervene? Or should she tell right. her son, you work it out? Go. That's it. Yeah, right. That's a yes, it is, Sherry. Here, here, the mother should not intervene right away unless, <gasps> unless it's a drastic case of her. No, you should not. Not right away. Okay. Mm -mm. And I'm going to tell you why. Come on, Sherry, stay okay. with me. I'm going to tell you why. The mother should not intervene right away because your son has a voice. And he needs to let them know that the behavior is unwarranted. He needs to let them know that. You need to let them know that once, let them know it twice. They continue to do it. Now it's time for you to intervene. But he needs, go to, get stand, he needs to, to use his voice because his silence is consent. He can't run to mama every time something happened. He got to stand up. He can't run to mama for everything. And my, my mom was the same way. My mom would fight a bear back then. My sister's too. You know, I get in a fight with the whole family ready to jump on them. Sometimes I got to go ahead and take yeah. that L so I can learn. Right. Because I cannot continue to run home every time I, cause I grew up with all girls, Sherry and Kim. You know, I had all sisters, four sisters, Shirley, Barbara, wow. Sandra, Michelle. I love them all to death. Those are my sisters. I love them, but they cannot be there for me. I, most of my fights I got into when I was younger is because of my sisters. Right? Some guy trying to put his hands. I'm just, I'm just keeping a buck with you. Somebody trying to put their hands on my sisters. I got to go ahead and deal with them. But we have to allow our sons to go through the process. If he's being bullied, you know, he needs to let them know, look, this behavior is unwarranted. Leave me alone. I appreciate it. I mean, at least stick up for itself. Now, if it gets to the point where it's going to another level, then it's time for you to step in and do something about it. But give him a chance to get it right. 
Yeah, karate right. classes. Exactly. Okay, Sherry, your turn. Taekwondo. Right. Yeah, that's the easiest thing for kids to do. Taekwondo is a blast. All my kids in Taekwondo. Yeah, absolutely. And I also just pictured a small child being like, unhand me, as Robert so professionally <laughs> said it. I don't know how well that works. You know. But at least he tries. Robert, I come from a family. I'm from Chicago. And I come from a family. Like, you do one thing to us. My aunties show up. My cousins show up. Like my family ready to be, they ready to fight. And so, mm -hmm. um, and, and also I come from a family of, you don't run from a fight. I ran from a fight one time, Tammy Luce Vardy, she beat my ass and I ran. <laughs> my sister jumped on her back and bit her like a pit bull, but I ran. <laughs> Do you know my daddy took me over to Tammy's house, told the parents sat back there and had that daggone malt liquor um, mm -hmm. They sat there like this was Gladiator 300, put on some <laughs> Al Green, made me go in the backyard, me and Tammy, and my father was like, if you run, I'm going to whoop your behind. I'm looking wow. at Tammy, Tammy look, and I looked at my daddy like she beat my ass the first time. What is you? What are you doing to me? <laughs> Tammy looked at me like, bitch, I'm pulling all your hair out. I wear wigs now. That's the way Tammy was looking at me. Yeah. I look oh, at man. my daddy and my mama, they drinking and got Al Green on. So mm. we standing there. And I say all I remember is putting my head down and my arms started doing this. Tammy grabbed a bunch of my hair, swung me oh, all the man. way around. And I was just like, because the fear of the whooping was bigger than Tammy. And I fought I Tammy. Right. And guess what? Tammy whooped my ass. But my daddy said, wow. this way, he said, yes, you got you she got you but did you mm -hmm. will never run from a fight exactly i did not get it, it, that it, it, hmm? i thought it was cruel and unusual punishment missing a patch of my yeah. hair and all my barrettes <laughs> was gone and my oh little, my you God. know the big balls cool. the girls wear on their ponies oh. but i don't run from fights now I, it did right. now i'm the type of person something happened all jeffrey got to come in that room and he all he got to say is mama so and so where what Sherry about wow. to show up and show out. You so got, I know I gotta stop being so protective of yeah. my son. Got, yeah, but you gotta teach him it's okay to be protective. First of all, that was that was cruel what happened to you. I mean, but we all can do that. I can <laughs> yeah, do that all the time. Damn it. It was cruel, but I understand what your father was doing. Your father was saying, Look, you might take an L, but you need to let her know that you ain't gonna run from her because she'll respect you when she knows you're not gonna run from her. Now, if you continue to run, she gonna chase you every day. Now, did every she respect day. you after that? Be honest. Yeah, she didn't mess with she, me no she, more. She didn't mess with you no more because no, she just she wanted to see bullies pick on people who appear to be weaker than them. That's why I said we gotta teach our sons how to use their voice. Sometimes you're gonna have to fight. I don't wanna fight, but hey, you keep on running up on me, I'm gonna crack you. I, I don't wanna do it, but I, I, I may have to, 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 to set an example okay. because if I keep running, like I used to do, I used to run too, and 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 finally got my mom said, "Get back out there." She said, "Get back I'm out saying, there, Robert. You, you should and, be happy." And, you know. and, and, and Sherry, she never messed with you again, but you lost your hair, she Lord never. Jesus. <laughs> but it's a good guy. But Robert, well, you should bad. be happy to know uh, Joshua handled his business, and yeah. uh, he stood a little taller. So the bully came up; they handled their business. All is good. Joshua feels good about himself. He wasn't worried now. They, I think they probably back to friends. Who knows? But he, he, he said, "I'm not going to take any more of this." And uh, I, I was at the school all day yesterday. But my son now. Feels good about oh, I'm sorry. No, that's it. Kim, I apologize. Um, mm -hmm. There was another thing that came up with Jeffrey. Jeffrey does know how to uh, wash his clothes and fold him up, he makes his bed. Now, it is, it's, it drives me batty because he don't make it the way I would make it. And I feel mm -hmm. like because I'm always working, I have mother guilt and I try not to hold on to it, but I do have mother yeah. guilt being a single yes. mom. And I feel like sometimes, you know, do I make Jeffrey cook or anything? No, because that's the only way I, I feel like I get to bond with him when I cook for him. And when I go and I, I love folding his clothes because I fold them up real nice. I put them on a bed, he puts them up. But it just, for me, it's that I'm holding on to um, 
some memories of when he was little. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I do this, but I probably shouldn't exactly. be. Because if, if he don't, no. when he put him out the laundromat, they'd be in his chair for a week. To mm -hmm. Right. And guess what? what am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. Well, well, you just said it, Sherry. I mean, you know, deep down, you're trying to hold on <laughs> to the younger, junk, younger version of your son. And he's 18 now, Sherry. He, he's he's really, I mean, 18 is really grown man. But he used to mama fold his clothes. So guess what? He going to look for some young lady. Hey, you're not going to fold my clothes? My mama do it. You're not going to cook for me? That's what my mama do. Ooh. See, you have not taught him to be self-sufficient. Real talk. Right. I date a man like that. And I don't want to date a man like that. No, Sherry, don't feel guilty because you out here providing a good life for your children. Now, there's other ways to spend time with your son besides folding his clothes and cooking for him. You could spend some time talking to him or he can cook for you and you sitting at the table. It's You got to reverse that thing because if you don't, you're not going to always be there for him to be doing all these things. He needs to learn how to do it on his own, right? Okay. Just like Kim okay. said with her son. She told her son, you speak up for yourself. Tell him that the behavior is unwarranted. Tell him you're tired of it and you're not putting up with it no more. He did that. And then what happened? When you stood up to that young lady, what happened? Your son has got to stand on his own two feet. You've done a great job with him. Don't be getting guilt. Don't feel guilty because you out here busting your butt, providing a good life for your child. Don't feel guilt. Too many mothers do that. And they feel guilty because they work so much. And now I got to come home and I got to coddle him some more because I've been working all the time. No, no, you don't. Your son's living a good life. I promise you he is. He's, and you provided all these resources. I know he is. I know he's living a good life. But don't feel guilty by that. Still make him have responsibilities. Son, I know I've been working. Why don't you have dinner ready for me? You know I've been working all day. It's, I thought you would have made me something. Reverse okay. that thing. He's 18. Okay. So he's about Reverse. to go off into the world. So we got to get him ready. Gotta it's, get not him ready. Yeah, it's not no, too late. It's not too late. I love that. Well, well, Robert, tell everyone where you can get your book, please. Let's, let's tell everyone. Uh, because this is support a uh, black business, but this is our segment, but this is my friend. I have the forward on it. It's written by me, but you can go to, go ahead, Robert. Yes, Robert Jackson Motivates with the S.com. You can see all my materials on there from my first book up to the seventh book, Robert Jackson Motivates.com, because the first book was Black Men Stand Up. And um, that's another book that I wrote to try to deal with all the pain that I dealt with growing up. And mothers got to let go of that pain because hurt people tend to hurt other people. We didn't get into the mm. emotional intelligence side because like Kim said earlier, you know, she heard her son yelling out certain things uh, and it sounded like her because kids yeah. are sponges and we got to be careful screaming, cussing, yelling at our kids all the time. Then we wonder why they cussing and acting crazy. The psychological, spiritual and emotional well-being of any child is a parent's responsibility. I said psychological, mm. spiritual, emotional well-being. Emotional intelligence means managing your emotions while managing his. It's not control. Yeah. It's managing emotions. Two questions That's for you. Do you do, if somebody wants to uh, bring you to their church or an event to speak, where would they get in touch with you? Uh, they go to my website, robertjacksonmotivates.com with the S and just press book, Robert. That's how I get booked for all my engagements. Okay, because you're phenomenal. Another question. Yeah. How do you thank feel you. about, I grow up, and thank you so much, because it's, you know, being a single mom, you're trying to figure out the right way to do it. How do you, how do you raise up a king without, yes. you know, sacrificing his self-esteem? Like Jeffrey does mm -hmm. not like, when I get on him and I start moving my neck, that drives him through the wall. <laughs> and he always says, mom, can you please stop moving your neck? And I tell him I'm, I'm a black woman. It's in my DNA. My neck moves, right. uh, it, which is probably why I've been divorced twice. That dead go neck moving. But oh, oh, uh, there it is. And, this, and, this, and I got to stop grabbing air as well. I, I'm an air grabber. Um, and I'm a oh, clapper. I will in a heartbeat. But um, <laughs> the the thing about it is allowing our boys to cry. I grew up in a family of women where it's like, no, you don't cry. We both can't be crying if somebody in this damn house. Somebody right. gotta, I'm the cry. But, you know, allowing mm -hmm. our young men to 
get emotional. I think that is so important. That's that's a great point you brought up, Sherry, because this is the uh, backbreaker right here, because many of our young men are taught toxic masculinity. They taught man up. Don't be a punk. Don't show emotion. You know, when I've been hearing this ever since I was a kid, that's when I meet this young lady. Now I'm acting numb because I've been taught not to show emotion. You know, my best friend get killed and I don't even cry because I was taught not to cry. And then I ain't cried till I ran into his mom at a grocery store and she hugged me real tight. And that then I broke down two years later, you know, because we've been taught not to show emotion. Um, now, as far as you doing your neck movements and all that, you need to ask him, why does that bother you? You know, start asking him questions. Why does it bother you that I move my neck? Why does it bother you that I do this? And then have a conversation with him and find out what the deal is behind it, because it could be something traumatic is the reason why he don't like it, or it could be something else. But we, we can't find out until we um, talk to him, talk to each other and, and listen to each other attentively and find out what he what he needs. Now, on the emotional side, just like I mentioned before, um, there are four ways to deal with pain. Many parents are in pain and hurt people tend to hurt other people. And first of all, Sherry, I commend you. I commend Kim, any single mother. My mom raised five children by herself, five. Mm. By wow. Herself. And, and, and it was rough at times, but we got through it with her love, with her care. She worked, but she, she also made sure that we were self-sufficient. She also, I don't know how she did it. She working three jobs and she's still showing up for my games you know, in high school, she's still showing up for my track meets. I still don't know how she did it. You're right. But she would find a way to do it. And it's, and it's okay to make those kind of sacrifices. But also on the other spectrum of that, you know, mom was stressed out. And I felt that a lot. You know, I felt that stress. And I and, and like Kim said earlier, when she heard her son yelling out, you know, different things to the dog, you know, kind of remind her of what she was saying. You know, I think she lost her emotions a lot. Because it's stressful raising kids by yourself, right? But we still need to teach our young men because the weakest man on the planet is a man who cannot control his emotions. Mm. Because when he got out of control emotions, he lost control of the whole situation. And out of control emotions can get you locked up. It can get you killed. It can get you in a lot mm. of bad situations. So that's why that emotional intelligence piece is important. Mothers got to practice self-care and breathing techniques and meditation and all the different things. I try to exercise, eat right, meditate, pray, and get some rest and laugh every single day because too many mothers feel bogged down. And then when you get home, you're dealing with the job, you're dealing with this person, want this and this person want that. And mothers never get a break. And then they put all that stress off on children including their sons. Right. And then the son turns around and put that stress off on some other young lady. And it's a vicious cycle that we have to break. Got you. How you talk to your son about sex? Ha! Well, that's a good, easily. Um, you know, because if you don't talk to him about sex, the internet will, his friends will. Um, you know, I started talking to my son about sex when he was like 10 years old, you know, by just probing, asking questions. So, so tell me what you and your friends talk about. What do you feel about this? And I would ask him questions about sex and then he'd get embarrassed. And I said, son, don't get embarrassed. It's okay. Sex is a natural thing. It happens. I said, if you're going to be involved, you know, I need to make sure that I get you equipped with everything you need to be successful. So share it. You know, he's going to feel uncomfortable. A lot of young, a lot of <laughs> young men feel uncomfortable talking to men about sex, let alone their mama. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I ain't never talking to my mom about sex. That was a that's a, that's an uncomfortable conversation. You know what I mean? Hey mom, I seen this girl I like and can you help me buy some condoms? You know, I, I you know, I'm just you know, I never I never had that conversation, but my mom had it with me. And it, it was uncomfortable, but she said, Hey, it's okay. I just want to make sure you're okay. If you ever need to talk about anything, let me know. And it's just a it's just an ease into it. Too many parents just jump right into it. No, ease into it. Say, son, I know you're dating. And, um, you know, just be straight up, because if you don't teach him, the streets will. And he's going to learn from okay. other people. And the last thing you want him learning from is them little knucklehead friends he got, you know, who giving him bad advice. So I pulled out a banana, showed my son how to put the condom on and stuff. Say, you you decide you want to be active. Here's a condom. And you know what? I will go check his wallet 
like every now and then. I go check his wallet and see if that condom is still in there. <laughs> and that condom got old for a minute, but when he went to college, that's a whole other story. I got him from high school, college. College, they tore his butt up down down at Morehouse. So anyway, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> I have never done the banana, but I will do that. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just a demonstration. Person. Okay, just yeah. a demonstration. Maybe we'll do that next but week on the show. Afraid. Yeah, and don't be afraid to tell them, you know, hey, if you decide you want to have sex with somebody, take a good look at her and ask yourself, can I look at her for the next 20 years? Put some stuff on his mind. Do you think mind. that registers though in your in your teenager's head like the next twenty years? You think that like really registers? I, I think it does. I may give you something to think about, you know, because then you have to then you have to start explaining why you said that. You got to put some commentary behind it now, Sherry. You got to tell them like, you know, you having sex with all these different people is like everybody spitting in this cup. I know it sounds gross. Everybody spitting in this cup and then you drink. You know, you have to start breaking it down. And I told my son that. I said, you having sex with everybody she had sex with and everybody they had sex with. And, you know, we start having a conversation. He said, ugh. I said, well, you know, you just know what you're getting yourself into. I said, I would advise you to put one of these on. <laughs> if wow. you do you do um, you hire yourself out to single moms to talk to their kids? <laughs> uh, right, right. <laughs> I get I get so many requests to talk to kids. I mean, I do I, I do it as much as I can. Um, that's why I try to have conferences. I mean, we have a we have a nonprofit where we do a big conference every year. This past year, we did it at Morehouse. Uh, oh yeah, tell great. about your scholarships that you give out. Yeah, NFL, yeah, NFL great Michael Vick was the keynote speaker, and you know we talk about these things. We talk about mental health. Uh, we talk about sex education. We talk about um, goals for the future. And it's just a day of fun and learning. And, you know, my good friend, Miguel Wilson from Miguel Collections uh, here in Atlanta at Phipps Plaza, he came out to speak, talk, telling the guys how to dress uh, and how to dress the way you want to be addressed, taking care of your mental health. So we have several guest speakers, not just for, and then we have the pretty and amazing conference for the young ladies on the same day. So we have the mm. No More Excuses conference for the young men, the Stand Up conference, Speaking Truth and Never Doubt and Unlimited Potential. Then we have the Pretty and Amazing conference uh, for the young ladies, where we had actress Jasmine Burke was one of the speakers. Uh, my good friend, uh, uh, oh my God, just slipped my mind. That she's right on my. We, you, you met her Saturday, Cam, uh, comedian, uh, Darlene, Miss Darlene, a comedian. Uh, she came over okay. to, and, and she's a radio personality. Uh, Darlene, um, I can't believe, TJ, what's Darlene's last name? Darlene McCoy? <laughs> Darlene McCoy Jackson. So, and we give away scholarships at the end of this uh, event. I, I love that part of it. We give away 20 scholarships. Oh, no. kids. Oh, After we brought these kids in from all over the country, staying downtown at the Marriott Marquis, these kids never been out of their environment, you know, and, and, and it, it, it is so exciting for me to see this because I was that kid. You know, I didn't, take my first plane ride until I had a football game, you know, when I was a teenager. Wow. So getting these kids out of their environment, I mean, it's changed their perspective. My nephew said, I'm going to Morehouse. I mean, he's only 16, but that that trip changed his life. Now he wants to move to Atlanta, go to Morehouse and go to college at HBCU. So it's a great, great program. Well, I thank you so much. Can you show uh, Robert's book again and the website? to go and purchase his book. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's in the live chat. If you want to pop that back up, that graphic. Uh, it's, uh, let's see what we got here. There you go. You can check Robert out Jackson. Robert Jackson motivates.com. Go ahead and say hi. <laughs> oh, my youngest I see somebody is loved. <laughs> say hi, say hi, Miss Shepard. Hi, Miss Shepard. Hi. You ready to get your daddy back? Okay, we're gonna give him back to you in a, in a hot second. We're gonna let your daddy come back to you. So Robert Jackson motivates. That's, that's my boss. Say hi, Miss. Right. Hi, Miss K. Hi, hey, baby girl. Hi, Miss so Willie. Did you get to go to Dave and Buster's? No. Mm. Oh. She had to change her plans. She got in trouble. We ain't gonna talk about that. Was that room clean? See, while well, I was just talking about it, Sherry, was your room clean? 
Look at her, she ran off. We won. <laughs> we won. <laughs> hey, Hello. hey, you got it's consequences. Hey, the room got to stay clean. You got to keep all this stuff up off the floor. It's consequences. I oh, still got Christmas presents in the basement from the consequences from last damn year. <laughs> I know that's right. Well, you know, be the bad guy. You don't have to be the bad uh, guy. You being the person that's grooming him to be the man that he needs to be. You grooming him, teaching him from being a young boy to being a, a, a young man. That's all you're doing. And everything you're doing is a teachable moment. And you're doing it out of love. We're not doing our kids like our parents did us back in the days. They pop us and ask questions later. No, we're trying to teach them along the way. But they got, they got to keep up with everything we ask them. We don't ask much of our kids. Taking the trash out, washing dishes, that's doing nothing compared to what but we to do. Them, they think, yeah, but they think it's a lot. They, that's the problem. Yeah, they think, oh, they think it's the end of the world. The end of the world, end but the you're world. right. Compared to what we do every day and working, so they can have, uh, you know, a roof over their head, et cetera. They have no right. idea. That's the problem. And I guess that is a question, you know. Well, no, I, 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 I'm not going to ask more questions. I got to give a shout out to Bernard Jackson. He's watching us. Y'all know the group Surface. He asked me what I was eating, pizza, but it's a diet pizza. Okay, sorry, I had to say that. A lot of people were asking in the I, comments um, as well. They were asking uh, what am I I'm eating? Pizza. Yeah. Pizza. We have to it's end now. Pizza. Oh, sorry, Kim. I was asking, did you have any more questions, but it's all good. Well, yeah, we gotta, really she's gotta go back. Yeah, me too. I gotta, eat all I gotta get out of here in the morning. We appreciate you coming on, Robert. This was so wonderful. And it was very eye-opening. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for having me. We really appreciate you. Our fans and subscribers, if you could go to Robert Jackson Motivates with an S dot com. Uh, Robert is available for booking uh, opportunities to come and speak to you about mm -hmm. raising strong children, strong boys, and mm -hmm. also his book, No More Excuses. So definitely mm -hmm. please support this Black business. And thank you, uh, Sita from Miracle Buttercream for sponsoring mm -hmm. our Black Business segment. We love you for that, Sita. So we appreciate you, Robert. Uh, what a blessing you have been. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so Robert, much for coming on. And I love the show. Yeah. Keep it going. Thanks for all you do. Uh, all right. Thank Most you. Definitely, sir. Uh, be sure that to support cool, Robert. Kim. Huh? That was really, really pretty cool. I did good, go didn't I? Yeah, he was great. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go I use his book. Him empty out. He about to empty out all the trash and fold up his clothes. He already vacuumed, yep. cleaned the bathtub. He already did his bathroom, but he about to fold and up Joshua his Joshua ain't done clothes. nothing. I need Joshua to go out there and pick up this dog poop. That's what I need. Oh, huh? I want to teach Joshua how to make this little pizza, too. Hey, before you take off, so just uh -huh. so we don't forget, would you two smile? Oh, or you can eat that pizza. Uh, Maybe let's let's plug Kim's comedy dates one more time before we get a, a screenshot for the thumbnail. Uh, Kim's on tour. You can go see her. I know she's got Chicago coming up. She has Cleveland coming up. Look at that. We crossed out all the ones that have happened already. She's at the Improv wow. the 17th and 18th. Check it out. December 1st. This is a cool one, Kim. You're in Fort Lauderdale at Louder Hill. I can't. Uh, I don't know where you're at. There it is. Check it out. J. Anthony Brown, Kim Whitley. And look who it is. Her boyfriend, her husband from next Friday, um, DC Curry, the pig DC farmer Curry. from Georgia, is going to be there with Kim and J. Anthony Brown and Marvin Dixon will be hosting that. That is in Fort Lauderdale, right? Uh, um, Lauder Hill, and I think it's at the Lauder Hill Event Center, Lauder Hill Plaza. Pardon me. Should yes. Nice. Nice. Go check that out. When are we going to uh, go see New Edition, Kim? New Edition, uh, send me a video. They got a residency at the Wynn Hotel in Vegas. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. Uh, their first, they kick off their tour uh, or their residency February 28th, but it's not going long. I think it goes to like April and it's in a very small venue. Not used, It's not an arena like they're usually in. It's like a 1400 seat theater. I think this is kind of like a, a test. So we got to support new edition so that they sell out to get a bigger yes. venue uh, so they can have a full-time residency. Yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah. Uh, February 28th happens to be a date that I have to work on the talk show, but I am free after that. And I want to do a girl's trip because I want to do, uh, you saw Usher, but I want to see new edition. I want to see Usher. 
I want to see Magic Mike. And we got to see Lunell. Like, we got to go there and support Lunell. She's in Vegas, her residency. So I just want to make it a jam-packed weekend. And then I got to come back and do the show. But New Edition, you can, uh, their tickets go on sale. Are you falling asleep? Uh, New Edition no, tickets go on sale so delicious. November okay. 10th. That I believe that is in two days. So please go and grab some New Edition tickets. Kim will be at the Cleveland Improv this weekend. You can go to the Cleveland next Improv. Weekend. Oh, next, not this weekend? Mm -hmm. Next weekend. Next weekend. So please go buy tickets. Kim is going to start on time. It's not going to be 17 comics that go up before her. So you go right. get there. Um, we learned you should do VIP time. tickets, Kim. Remember we talked about this. You should do we VIP tickets and have a private meet and greet. That's so right. uh, <laughs> please support Kimberly. She's very funny. I do got to say that. This girl is hysterical. I had Break. to follow her and it was hard. Oh, well, it was hard for me. Breaking this, news. Uh, what? You're, you want to get that? Oh, <laughs> Robert, Robert Jackson. Uh, great guest that you just had on. Would love to give away five of his books to our listeners. Oh, wow. So let's, uh, again, email us, twofunnymamas at gmail.com if you'd like a book. And, uh, you know, first come, first serve. What do you say, ladies? I'll say that's it. pretty awesome. That's really very generous of him. So uh, great guest, Kim. And uh, I know you all need to get out of here. So you can take me off the screen and we'll... Uh, Anything else before you get out of here, ladies? Well, let me see what let me see what Ida Rodriguez says. She sent a voice message. Hopefully, we could be able to hear it. Don't play that. You don't know what she's gonna say. Unless I she curses me out. You. What else? She so you about to make me cry? I will definitely come over there and sign them books. Jesus, you continue to bless me. <laughs> see, it was my said, idea. Look. And that, it there was it my idea. So you about to make me cry? I will definitely come over there and sign them books. Jesus, you continue to bless me. When she say you, it's the collective you. Two funny mamas, bitch. Yep. Good grief. <laughs> oh, boy. I get so sick of Kim sometimes, and I know people going to get on me. Why you Why you so mean to Kim? Why you just call her a bitch? Because I've been giving her advice the whole time on this day on podcast. She don't remember none of that. You know what she said? Marlon Wayans was on my show yesterday. He talked about mm -hmm. Kim Whitley. If you want to see what he said about Kim Whitley and her sleeping with him, uh, go to YouTube, SherryShowTV.com. It, so it was so funny. You can see exactly what Marlon Wayans said about and to Kim. <laughs> it's very, very funny. And um, I include this girl whenever I can on my talk show. They show yeah. pictures. If Kim makes a video, I will show the dag on video. To be, I got to get over there before her, the season like, is over. I got to you do to have to come. Season. We can't fly you in because the actors are on strike. So you got to you gotta right. come out there yourself. I'll come out. I'm gonna Guess who's coming to my laugh lounge? Who? B flat. No, B flat's coming on the laugh lounge. B flat coming on the laugh lounge. She's funny. You finally, she better not curse. It's, uh, we're trying to get it. We're trying to get it worked out with her schedule, but she is scheduled to come on uh, the Laugh Lounge for the Sherry Show. I know a lot of people have been asking about B-Flat, why she hasn't make, why she hasn't come on the Laugh Lounge. Um, mm -hmm. It's a lot of political stuff that's hard to explain, ratings right. and such things like that. But she's never been off my radar. So we're getting B-Flat on and I'm excited. We've had a lot of time. Marlon Wayans came on, Matt Rife came on. Um, well, Cat Williams was on, Lil Rail Howery was on, Michelle Buteau. We've had a lot of comics come to see. Oh, Donnell Rawlings came on. Wow. He was I was going to do a show with him so funny. Huh? Get out of there. I'm sorry. Lunell came on. Day. So we're having Please we're having a bunch Please of comics when you can get the... Okay. And then when you come, I got the guest room ready for you. Uh, So you can stay with me. And then we're good. Yeah. I know you got to go because I'm. I see half your body then slid out the podcast, Kim. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, God, how you know me so well? How? Because you know my door is over there. You already know. I have turned the chair. Have your body. Out. I know, have because your you body got past. Out of the podcast. 
Huh? You got to pack and I got to pee. So it's two peas. We got to I have to pack because I'm heading to uh, Dallas this weekend mm -hmm. for my bestie from sixth grade, Vonda, yeah. is getting married. Uh, I'm so happy. I think for early. Give her my love. I'm not sure. Arlene's but I'm already headed there. Yeah. She took, you know, Vonda's a Jehovah's Witness. So she told me I have to dress you know, conservatively, that I can't be with my chest. Because, you know, now that I had his breast reduction, I'm always got my chest out. Which That's I always why did she didn't anyway. invite me. I knew it. Because <laughs> she was in the way, she was in my wedding with you and she saw how you do with cleavage. She Mondo saw. was like, note to self, when I get married, we not inviting Kim Whitley. Kim <laughs> can't come. Kim cannot come. Because you know, you cannot come. I'm not happy. So I'm headed to Dallas. For this wedding. No, I got to get your wedding, wedding dress, not your red, the bridesmaid's dress back from Caroline Ray. Girl, she brought the, your bridesmaid's dress to wear it somewhere. I got Tell Caroline to look at the show. I did a story about her too on the same day Marlon was on. I talked about her pretending to be the tooth fairy to talk to Jeffrey. And it was very funny. Oh, they put her picture. Right. She's headed to film her special in Australia. <gasps> Are we going to go to Australia? She's going there in like a week and a half. I'll be. Oh, that's too late. This night. Why you didn't tell me, Kim? I, I forgot. You're a horrible forgot friend. To wow. You're not even Australia. going to Australia. I, she didn't invite me. You're not going to Australia. I've never been. I don't know why she didn't invite me. I'm going to mention that. Damn, I don't know. Kim. Maybe Damn. it's because I'm tall. Oh no. I don't know, but that could have been your eat, pray, loves. I know. I want to. I'm going to call her. All right, y'all. We out. Bye bye. What's with the grin? Jeffrey and Kim, yeah that's them, about to throw down again, tickling the soul from beginning to the end, to those friends, I love the way they do they thing, they digress, don't distress, such a beautiful mess, two real ones, so true, in the topics they address, so go ahead and subscribe, cause the party gets live, take a seat, get strapped in, they're about to take you for a ride.